Bob McAdoo was leading the Braves to what seemed to be their first playoff victory. At the end of three quarters, they held a 12-point lead. Coach Tommy Heinsohn sent his Celtics out for the final period after they had scored only 69 points in the first three. Whatever Heinsohn said seemed to have an effect on Dave Cowan. The big redhead started to hit all kinds of shots. He scored 20 points in the last quarter, the highest one-period score by any Celtics in the club's playoff history. This, combined with Don Nelson's 10 points, pulled out the victory for the Celtics. The series seesawed with each club winning on its home court. Game two was a home court victory for the Braves. Game three was a runaway for the Celtics with John Havlicek leading the way as usual. His 43 points and nonstop effort was just too much for the Braves. Game number four looked like it might be a Boston win in Buffalo. With nine minutes left in the game, the Celtics had a 10 point advantage. Then McAdoo, Hurd, and McMillan started to eat away at the lead. With only a half minute of playing time left, McAdoo put the Braves in front. Buffalo fans smelled victory. With nine seconds left, John Havlicek banked in a running shot to send the game into overtime, or so everyone assumed. Buffalo took a timeout. Everyone in the auditorium knew the Braves would try to get it to their top scorer, Bob McAdoo, who had already put in 44 points. Buffalo did go to McAdoo, who fired from the top of the key and missed. But Jim McMillan got the rebound back up as the buzzer went off. The Braves won the game, evening the series at two apiece, and their fans went wild. Boston won the fifth game at home and returned to the Buffalo Auditorium for game six. The drama of that contest was squeezed into the last 10 seconds of the game. With the Celtics ahead by two points, McAdoo stole the ball and tied the score. Now it was Boston's ball with seven seconds on the clock. Nelson inbounded to Havlicek. McAdoo blocked Hondo's shot right into the hands of JoJo White. McAdoo also blocked White's shot, but at the same time, he threw a block into JoJo as the buzzer sounded. Right there, the contact is made. Jack Ramsey, the Buffalo coach, did some foot stomping, claiming there should be one second left on the clock, but the officials ruled no time left for play, just for JoJo's free throw. There comes a time in every man's life when he must stand alone. His teammates can't help him. His coach can't help him. He must do it alone, and the pressure can be unbearable. JoJo White came to such a time. The game was officially over if he could sink a free throw. If he missed both throws, it meant overtime on a very unfriendly court. The tension was almost physical. In a situation like this, muscles tighten and the ball becomes a lead weight. Thousands watched in Buffalo Auditorium, millions more watched on television. And the object of this pressure was JoJo White. The first won the game and the series. The Celtics were on their way to the second round and an old nemesis. For the past two 